Dantazi. Today we're going to talk about another Kyushu target from Mohan Sokin's notes. This one is called Kiyose. Now, interesting to note that uh, in, in the actual written notes, it's called Kiyose. In the, uh, uh, the chart that he listed, uh, the little uh, arrow that goes out to the word, it's called Kyosen. So I don't know exactly which one is correct, but the name is really irrelevant when you think about uh, the martial aspects and the, the methodology to use these. Now, the target is called a fatal target. It's attacked with a fist, an elbow, and an, a knee. Now, this target can be attacked with other things, as we've uh, proven in our studies all along going through our Kyushu careers, because we've been using these targets for 30 plus years and we've been working with them, you can use a lot of different tools to get these to work. Now, we're going to go into those three in a little bit more depth, and uh, we'll get into the target in the three-dimensional anatomical study as well in the extended videos. But let's work with this. It's called fatal because it affects the heart, uh, the liver, and the stomach. So these are very powerful attacks, and you're getting into the organs that they're affecting, not just the central nervous system. Now, there's something important to note. When you're attacking the organs, you're attacking not only the organ itself, which goes under distress, but you're attacking the autonomic nervous system. Okay. Now, the autonomic nervous system is 80% of your brain function. So, in effect, if you're attacking the organs, you're affecting 80% uh, of the uh, nervous system as well. So, these, are, again, are very powerful targets. Now, the body targets are very powerful anyway, because you're, you're, you have that duality. You're affecting, of course, the central nervous system and the brain, but also the organs themselves. Now, because you have the... Uh, breastplate in the way, okay, these targets which are listed as below the um, breastbones, okay, below the collarbones and through here, would lie on the sternum. Now the sternum is a th thick massive bone and to get through that is very difficult because you have the pliability and the flexibility of the rib cage structure and the connective tissues between the ribs themselves and the sternum and you also have the give of the human body. But this is where kata comes into play as well. For example, we have this movement out of many different kata, okay? Uh, in this, this movement, you have the two hands working in conjunction. Now, you don't do this and then just slap your arm. What happens is one hand is pulling in as the other hand is forcing outward, and that's involving a lot of chest muscle, abdominal structures, and if you sink your weight into it, you're going to have your whole body mass. So you have a pulling action, a pushing action, and a body constriction that is going to multiply the effects on your Q-show targeting, okay? And you're going to have a much deeper ramification because of the power level increase. And we've talked about this in the, the four um, levels of Q-show striking in earlier um, videos. You can look them up here on YouTube. But that one action alone, you're going to be pulling behind the person's neck as you forward that strike into the sternum. And that's going to uh, not only double, but triple the amount of force going into that target. The other weapons that he mentioned were the elbow strike. Now you see this in the bubishi. You see uh, forms of the bubishi doing this, and they're digging into the sternum area. Now, you've seen other videos here on my YouTube channel using that elbow in a clinched position, uh, not on the sternum to cause the um, disruption that this one causes, because we've used this one, and you'll see it in the demonstration on the extended film, the effects with just a, a, a slap, okay? But this, we did it right in the chest, and the ramifications on the bronchial tubes, the breathing capacity of the individual, the uh, motor functions of the individual, even the senses of the uh, individual are stifled and stopped temporarily because of that shock. And again, we were in demonstration mode, not combative where you dig in uh, a lot. You could
could also grab and pull the person down into a knee stripe. Again, you have the double factor. You have the knee coming up, the pull coming down. You have your body mass coming into it, so you have a very powerful attack. In any event, uh, we'll be going into the um, anatomical research on this to do, explain exactly what the target uh, could be uh, on the underlying of the sternum. And we're going to show you the different pathways of why it would affect the heart, the liver, the stomach. We're also going to show you a demonstration of this in action so you can see the ramifications with just um, media, medium uh, power strikes. So this is all going to come together. Again, the extended videos are worthwhile because they not only have the historical ramifications of what the old masters used to teach and show and demonstrate uh, to a select few people, but also because uh, we want to be able to adapt it to our modern uses. This is a killing blow, as uh, Ohan Sokin uh, noted, but we're going to show you also how to use it in a modern approach so you can uh, do this safely in your self-defense, you can practice it safely in the dojo so you can get um, uh, realistic results. Also, with the uh, control that you can train it time and time again to make it a more natural ability for yourself. So thank you for watching. Please join the extended videos either here on YouTube, uh, in Patreon channel, or of course the Platinum subscription for more details.